We're not. Right now? Right now. Hello, world. Dude, don't look at the fucking camera. I know, you can't look at the camera. Podcast number two. Yeah. Podcast number two, we already got the uh, the first one down. We got the hardest part through. Yeah. We had that weird section where we just didn't know what the fuck we were doing. You had to drink one beer. Yeah. So, Get all tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could definitely tell towards the end that we were tired. I know, just reviewing it. You easily it tell. Going over it. It's but funny. It's, no, it was fun, though. I'd like to see, like, it was weird because we went into it with no certain conversation in mind. Like, Ow. nothing. And that's... You all right? It's fucking splinters, dude. I was gonna, I was gonna Jesus warn you there's splinters Christ. in that thing. That's why I gave it fucking to you. I had death trap. Last... No, but we went into it with, like, nothing, nothing to say. And then... It just happens. Mm -hmm. I think that's the like like right now. I have no clue what we're gonna talk that's about. That's all right, and that's good. It is like you good. just keep talking. You, it's like you set no bounds, just like jazz. Yeah, just like jazz. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I know. Like we were talking in the car, and and after we did the podcast, we were just hanging out, and you're like, "See, this is what we should have sounded like." It happens all the time. And right. As soon as we go on air, it's like we're just so monotone. Yeah, you don't we even talk. So boring. Yeah. It's like what the fuck. It's weird. Well, you just, even though, like, we're recording this and we can edit it and no one has to listen. Yeah. It's no, true. like, whatever. It's still weird. Yeah. It's weird. It's all in your head. It's I an know. illusion. It's fucked. It's a fucked illusion. So, the Millennials, podcast number two, Joe yeah. Rogan. Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You wish Joe Rogan. I wish Joe Rogan. Was. No, Joe Benino, fucking computer science. Tiss. Tying scientist. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah, I was about to call you a major. No, no, nope, you're more. a fucking computer scientist. Fucking scientist. Does it, does it like, it's such a wild thing, like, you didn't, it doesn't hit you <clears throat> that, like, you're literally a scientist now. No, it doesn't at all. I feel like I'm just on a break from school and... Yeah. Well, now, the cool... sign up for classes soon or something? The cool thing is now that most people will listen to you. Just because I have that just because piece of paper. Just because you have that, that special name. piece of paper. Even, yeah, and, like, even if, like... A couple months ago, if you were to talk to somebody and they were to ask you and you say, I'm a computer science major, they're way more inclined now to listen to you. Definitely. Two months difference. Yeah. That's wild. It is very wild. That's very wild. It's just, with the massive amount of people in the world, it's like something that's come about just so you respect someone's opinion. Just right. a piece of paper that tells you yeah. intelligence. Yeah. That's, that's all college weird. is. There's a, did you ever watch that Ivory Tower? No. With Michael Moore? No, no, it's not Michael Moore. It's kind of a Michael Moore. At the end, it's kind of a Michael Moore kind of documentary, but um, he basically is just the the documentary is basically just talking about college and just how much of a business it really just is. How much? It's pretty recent. Oh, uh, I don't know when it was made. Ivory Tower, but I watched it like two years ago. Oh no, so I watched documentary life. My documentary phase. life. Yeah, when I was just like, shut in. <laughs> Watching documentaries. A shut in? I said a shut in. That's all I did. I didn't fucking leave. I didn't go outside. I didn't do anything. You shared your knowledge with Luke. A little bit, yeah. yeah. But as much as he let me. <laughs> it was as much as he let me. I was. You probably well, forgot everything. Probably. Already. Yeah. His brain's fucking soup now. That's sad, man. It's just a bowl of chili. His bowl of jello <laughs> up there. Just bowl of jello. One fucking thing going at just keeping his legs moving. <laughs> keeping those hands going while he's fucking playing hockey. Yeah. But, um, no, basically, Ivory Tower was just... There was actually... They were saying... And this is kind of going against it. You went to college. You got a degree. And that's great. But there was a lot of people who were saying, is it really worth it because of how much money people are spending going? And there was a couple... Uh, couple of people, I don't know if they were entrepreneurs or, or business people, mm -hmm. uh, businessmen or whatever. They were like interviewing them? Um, no, these these people with money were going to kids in school. Basically, this is just for the business majors. And they were literally saying, I will fund a business right now for you. You drop out of school and try to start your own business. What did they say? And no, there was a bunch of people doing it. There's a bunch oh. of kids. This yeah, is they, like the whole documentary was about? No, this was just a portion of it. Mm. This was just a portion of it. It's cool. It's been a while since I saw it, but that really stood out to me that these people were going up to kids that were invested in an education, and they were basically just giving them some money and saying, here's some money. So basically the money in this situation is replacing the degree that they're going for. That's so cool. You know what I mean? And they're saying, here's some help. 
go get your business started. That's we're going to invest in it. So I think I was telling you about that the other day in the CS world, like computer science. Yeah, yeah. And that there's a thing called a GitHub page, which pretty much hosts all of the code that you've ever written. Like mm -hmm. you can upload it, and it's like your profile. It's pretty much like your resume. Yeah. And people won't even use that when you submit if you're like your personal information uh, to get a job they'll ask you for your resume but they also ask you for your github link right so this link to your profile that shows all of the shit you've ever worked on and other repositories because it's called like the repositories that you put your code in mm -hmm. and you can help other people out and it's basically you can track all of that on this one page yeah and so all of your experience is just right there and people look at this and just quickly go through your code, see what kind of programmer you are. Yeah. And people are getting like their favorite jobs that they ever asked for just by people like going to this GitHub page. Wow. And there's like scouts on there, like Google has scouts on there. So Google Facebook. Google likes it. Oh yeah. Google's yeah, they're uh, for sure. Okay. They, it's like scouting. It's just like going to hockey games and mm -hmm. having people in the crowd scout you. Right. Except it's on the internet and anyone can see so your code. It's kind of it's like kind of like a, it's kind of like a social media page just for your work in a way. Yeah. You know, like it's just it's just you on the internet like a page dedicated to just checking you out. That's not even how it came about though. It's because it was really convenient for teams to work on because you could upload it to this to this one repository and then people can pull that code from that repository and use it. Okay. So it's all open source and it's really cool. Yeah. And it's like, you don't even need a resume anymore, and you don't need a bachelor's degree in the CS world, that is. Yeah. Which is really interesting. That is really weird. So you don't, not necessarily your, well, you need your degree in the CS world. No? Um, if I knew all the things I knew right now, and learned it just by internet research and stuff, which would be very, very hard, because I have such a good big picture approach to mm -hmm. software programming that yeah. I don't think some people would get from just minor details of articles and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I think if I had all the knowledge I did now and just had a great GitHub page that they wouldn't even care. Really? Yeah. Well that tells me one thing, it tells me that your your education wasn't just getting a credential then. You did you did put a lot of things together. I mean yeah. that uh, you that was a good that was a good move then. for sure yeah yeah you learn from your school oh experience. definitely it taught me to learn you know people always say that yeah but yeah. it really did now that I look back at it because my last year in school and I was in that senior project I literally had to learn two new frameworks and a, a new language which is like all new tools and I learned that in the matter of like two months which was insane yeah I just noticed like how flexible my brain actually was and how much information I just throw at it and like and, and retain it and retain it yeah but the reason I could retain it is because I had this bigger picture of what software programming was and this thing called object-oriented design absolutely so I saw all these minor details and I was just like oh that's it that's just what they're doing it's an interface or something so along the lines of that you weren't lost what, whatever information they threw at you it didn't it didn't confuse you because you had that broader picture. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I've, I've done this exact same thing in a different language. So I, I know what's going on there. All right. Yeah. Well, like the other day, you were trying to learn that other language and you came to me. Yeah. And you were talking like, about it. And you were like, this is just the same language, but just, what, would you, what was it? It was just, just way shittier version. Way shittier version. You just able to recognize those patterns without anyone telling you that. Without yeah. anyone ever saying that prior knowledge, you just going into it and just analyzing it and just being well, this is what and it's, it is. And it's really basic. Right. And that's how languages should be for computer science because you're making all this crazy ass shit. It's right. super complex and you want it to be as basic and easy to use because it's really just a tool mm -hmm. for you to build these bigger systems and stuff like that. It's behind all these things that we use every day. Yeah. Yeah. It's like your hammer or your favorite screw gun or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's it really like is. Working with Bob. Working with Bob, yeah. Yeah, I mean, really, like, as for like even like something like writing, which is something that I'm interested in. Dude, like, should we tell Bob stories? We could. <laughs> oh. So we should tell Bob stories. Hold off on that. Really funny. Uh, with with something like writing, that's a that's a difficult one too because you can definitely say that you don't need a degree in 
anything to just be a writer. It's like a self-made profession mm -hmm. where it's kind of just like you just have raw talent or raw skill or drive or whatever. But a lot of the a lot of the writers have to have something to say. So you don't necessarily need a degree in writing per se, but you need a degree or not a degree, but you need an education and something else so you have something to say. So you got to be smart to yep. be a good writer. It depends. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, How do you even define it, smart. Yeah. Well, no, no. You make that makes sense. I was just thinking in terms of like, <clears throat> like a scientific approach. Like you don't have to be scientifically educated to be a good writer. No. You don't. Definitely not. Definitely not. But. But maybe an expert in social or interactions. Just, yeah. Like a sociologist. Or just anything. Just yeah. you just have to be educated in a way. I mean, honestly, to say like, I mean, I'm not gonna. Like, for me, I would not say I'm educated in science compared to people who are scientists. But, like, I know more about science than a lot of people do just because I'm interested in it and I just like it. I just read it for fun. Mm -hmm. And that definitely rubs off on if I'm writing just a piece of fiction, if I'm writing just a story, that just comes up every time, like, as far as, like, different, uh, different, like, different content that you want to write about, different ways you want to approach it a different story or metaphors you can throw in all this different stuff like you you'll read like a novel like a western novel like a larry mcmurtry novel yeah. and you'll be like well it's a western what what more is there to say mm -hmm. but he, he'll he'll basically throw in some some like philosophical sociological deep shit on you it's probably relating to the actual situation right yeah it fits in the story if you're if you don't know you're you're not gonna see that you're just gonna like the western yeah, but if you do know, it appeals to you as well. So he's, he's appealing to this really, really wide variety of people. You're writing for people who just like Westerns, and you're writing for intellectuals, if you uh -huh. want to call them that. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So that's, I think that's what a, a good writer could do. Is So it's like ambiguous. I, ambiguous in a way, or just it, it can reach a lot of people mm -hmm. on different levels, no matter who reads it. Like, I heard a quote one time, and it's absolutely true. Nobody ever reads the same book. So if you read a book, yeah, like that, and I read the same book, they're not the same. It's just like music. It's just like music. Yeah, if you mm -hmm. read lyrics, I probably a, a little bit like film. Film's a little more, it kind of, pampers you a little, a little bit. It draws things out for you, but yeah, you got like the visual and you, you're hearing every all the music and stuff, so it's yeah, kind of easier to get it's, that message. I don't know. They're just more straightforward in a movie. Yeah, it's there's more of a purpose, like that's very clear but there's some films that are not like that as well Patterson Patterson yeah maybe did you like that it was hard to follow for me yeah to be honest yeah I, I liked it a lot yeah I liked it a lot just just I, writing it was, and stuff it's just boring at first man I agree like, I liked how simple it was I think that was one of my favorite parts is because his life was just so simple he's doing the same exact thing day over and day over yeah he's finding all this beauty in it right writing these poems. Well, dude, the funny thing about it is, to some people might completely just destroy me for saying this, but I don't think he was that great of a poet. Like, from the, there was like, what, four poems that they showed as he was writing them? Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy <laughs> saying? Like, I, I don't think that that really mattered. I, I, maybe it was just his style. Have you read, like, have you read any William Carlos Williams? Did my dad show you any is of that, stuff? That was the, that's who's, he wrote a poem and that poem is that movie, right? I don't William know. William Carlos wrote a William poem Carlos, called Patterson? He, well, he was from Patterson. Oh, he William from Carlos Patterson? William is a poet that was from Patterson, and he was his idol in the movie. Yeah. You know, he had the book. Uh huh. So I don't know if, if um, that was what the movie was about. Was it if it was about a poem? Is that what you heard? I think that's what your dad was saying. It might be. He looked into it way more than yeah. that. He's watched it like fucking. <laughs> he loves it. He's a crazy bastard. <clears throat> He's a crazy bitch, man. He likes his art, his poems, especially. Yeah. Well, speaking of crazy bastards, man, you've, you're gonna go see Bob tomorrow. Fuck. You're gonna go see Bob. Do you wanna do this? You wanna do tell some a Bob, Bob story? Tell a Bob story, man. Uh, tell the. Uh, well, the. Which one? Baby birds. The, the baby birds? Yeah. We, so we had. I feel weird telling you. I guess we you, can't. You dude. were there. We can't. We can't tell a Bob story. It doesn't you work. You weren't there? No, you were there. You weren't there. I was there. Oh, yeah. You're just like telling me I'm this telling story, you a story that you were there. Just look at the camera. No. Explain it. <laughs> I can't 
basically this guy, this guy, Bob, that we work for, we're, so I'm working with Bob, and, and we're, we got this house. Carpentry. We're doing, yeah, we're carp, we're doing carpentry, and, um, the house is right now, the foundation is up on carjack, and we have, like, this whole underneath this house dug out in the crawl, and we're, we're jacking it up, and we're putting these, uh, these supporters and whatever and you and our buddy Luke are like I think taking down gutters or some shit yeah. or whatever and you guys come around the corner and you guys came across some baby birds nests and it mm -hmm. fell on the ground they were like what like fucking three of them like, like maybe a day two. old like they were fucking young like they had feathers barely any hardly any yeah but anyways you guys came around and Bob's so stressed out we got he it up on the cars me and Luke fucking losing it yeah just <laughs> laughing our heads yeah well. and so he's like what's going on and you guys are like bob we found some baby birds and he goes what what oh shit <laughs> oh shit and he dude he dropped everything right then the house there. is on a fucking car jack on a car jack and he's like oh shit we gotta save these birds we're saving these. so <laughs> yeah we fucking put the birds in a glove we took he them to ran his, to his car got a got a glove like Cut it open, he's trying to rip it, and then so the birds would fit in there. He was so determined, yeah. man. He fixed, and I think they did. They live. We took him to the. Know. We took him to the house to his wife, and she took him to the fucking vet. And the vet's probably looking. We at wanted him to like, show all his kids the birds. You're right, but they wanted to save them too because their mom was dead or gone. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, they destroyed their nest. The mom was gonna abandon them. Yeah, and um, but dude, they probably took that those birds to the vet. Probably fed them to their snake or Dude, something. Dude, they're that's like, what the fuck do you want us to do with this? Like, we don't give a fuck about your fucking birds. But the best part was is that we were getting paid the whole time. Mm -hmm. And we, while this house is on a fucking car jack, we all just get in the car and, oh, time for a ride. Yeah. Some window time. He's an interesting guy, Bob. Yeah, he's fun. He's weird. Well, he's like, he's such a scatterbrain with everything he does. Like, everything, like, his... His job is so dependent on him being organized, and he's such a scatterbrain. And he's all, I mean, he's a great guy. Yeah, he really is. Bob. You gotta love him. He's funny. We got some of the Bob stories. Yeah. But so you're gonna you're gonna make some money, and then you you're going to live out in the woods for oh, a week. Fuck yeah, man. I'm so woods. excited for that. Yeah. Just to uh, get rid of my phone for a week straight. You gonna put it away? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna bring it with me, like turn it off, put it in the bag. Just you gonna carry it on ever? No. Not till the day's over. But I'm going to have Austin drive me and Nikki out, sister, to... I don't even know where. We haven't really figured anything out, just food-wise. Yeah. But I've never... I thought it was so weird how I've never been camping consecutively for more than, like, three days. Yeah, really. Yeah. I don't think I have yet, either. Yeah, like, totally unconnected from society. And along the lines of that, just how much of a trip that would be mentally, like, to get out of this element, you know? Yo, for sure. This fucking thing's done. Just what would come about in my head, thought process-wise. Well, I've, I've heard, you know how, like, when you go camping and you get, you get, um, uncomfortable very quickly? Mm -hmm. You notice that? And, uh, it's kind of just like, just ignore it, you gotta get used to it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times... Does it always bubble like that? Yeah. Make that noise? Yeah, that's, that's what it's supposed, that's to, what do. It's supposed to do. Oh. Basically, it's uh, called wood wick. And the 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 wick is, is like a cross. It's like an X. If you look at it. Oh. Can you tell? Yeah. And I guess the technology... It says it right here. Look at it. Um, plus wood wick innovation. This painted wick design delivers soothing crackle, fast fragrance, <laughs> and better burn. Soothing crap. I love it. Maybe yeah, too. Um, but you know, like, so you go you go camping and and you're like instantly, you know, you're worried about your feet getting wet. Uh, you're worried about just being dirty. You're sleeping. You're not comfortable. You wake up and then you got work to do. You got to fucking do the dishes. You got to clean. You got to cook. It's all a lot of work. And a lot of times you don't stay out there long enough for it to even be worth you say it. Say go to work. It's a lot of work. Talking about camping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was last week. It's time. a you lot. Said clean the dishes and then go to work. No, clean the dishes. And then I said it's a lot of work. Okay. I believe I it's a lot of work. You gotta, you know, cook all this shit. 
and you're constantly just working to just camp, to just live out in the woods. And the point of going out there is enjoying yourself and being out of your element and being outside and getting away from things and just kind of getting in touch with those those things. And I feel like a lot of times people have a negative view on it because they don't stay out there long enough. I probably haven't either. To really, you know, put in all that work to just sit outside for like two hours and just be like, ah, it's so pretty. Like, <laughs> it's like, fuck that, that sucks. Oh, but yeah, if you're yeah. Out, yeah, if you're out there for a week, then you've been out there all this time. You've had different experiences throughout the days. That's a, that's a big accomplishment staying out yeah. there. That you know was I mean? oh for sure. That was actually one of the favorite things I've ever wrote was when I was out camping yeah. out at Grand Sable Dunes. Mm -hmm. And first day goes, we set up camp. You know, we're hiking and we're really entertained. And we're so used to being like constantly entertained that the second day. We're all just sitting around the fire. Everyone was just bored as fuck. Yeah. And we were just sitting there, just like, we staring at grass, like, I don't know what the fuck to do. And we don't have our phones out and stuff, because we want to be out in nature. I'm pretty sure my mom was out there, so I don't know. Probably. But, um, then I was like, I really didn't want to write. I just, I was bored of everything. I don't know, it was weird. Yeah. And I get like that too. Yeah. It's like, like you just don't want to life. do anything. <laughs> like, I always say, man, I'm just tired of life. <laughs> it really bothers people. <laughs> what is there to live for, what? really? I'm bored. I'm tired of everything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I got my journal. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to force myself to write. Yeah. I'm just going to write whatever comes to my head. And the first, like, three sentences, I'm just writing, like, wow, this really sucks. I don't even want to waste my energy writing on this paper, whatever. Yeah. And I keep going, and then I start talking about, like, oh, man, I wish, like, my life had a purpose and that I just followed this this purpose. And that was what I thought of was, like, a zombie apocalypse. Like, I want some fucking excitement in my life. Yeah, you want be, like, you running want away from zombies, and, like, that was my purpose to live was it'd be, like, really entertaining. Right. Then I was, like, thinking, I'm like, fuck that. Yeah. Why would I ever want to live like that? Because if we live in the world that we do now, we can give it any purpose that we want. Right. And we we can propel ourselves on that purpose in any radical style of life that we want to. Yeah. Like why if we were surviving by from zombies, that like that's the only thing we can do. Right. You can't read and really you can't like I mean you still could, but we're just so open to the world right now. Yeah. If you if you're trying to survive from zombies basically you can just say you're trying to survive that's a stupid scenario no it's not like, because that's the same as that's basically like going back in history like if you're literally your life's purpose is to not die that is the life's purpose of, of a lot of our ancestors mm -hmm. which was just to stay alive and all these steps that they took in order to make that very uh, that very thing simpler are, is what made us evolve socially you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it started off, all we had to do, we were just trying to fucking stay away from we're fucking lazy predators. Fuck, man. Yeah. We're really lazy. Now we are. Yeah. But we used to not have, we couldn't be. The lazy ones died. Yeah, well, the only reason we stopped being lazy, or we started being lazy, is because we were like, fuck, I hate doing stuff. So we like had technology start doing shit for us. Right. And eventually we can just sit here and do podcasts and bullshit. But that makes life better. That's yeah. gotta make life better. Because you have the option of working hard or just being a pussy well there's I, one thing I notice is there's so many people who always say I would like to I would like to do that like I hate that like why aren't you doing it then why the fuck are you saying that not just do it put a name to it but like so many times this kid has told me oh I'm gonna play guitar yeah I would love to play guitar I'm like I have one at my house I have two I can teach you. I will teach you guitar tonight. <laughs> yeah. uh, right? Let's do let's, it right let's now. Let's go. Come on. I was sitting in my living room. I'm like, let's go. Yeah. Let's go in my room. Let's learn. And he's like, oh, it's just this one song I want to learn. But it's kind of hard, so I don't know if I can play it. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And I'm going to learn this song and play it in front of you to fuck you even more. Yeah. <laughs> did you? I did. Boom. Yeah. And then I'm like, hey, man, you want to learn it? He's like, mmm. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. I you, I don't care. Yeah, at that point, I I'm don't just feel like, for you. I, I don't care anymore. Yeah, I know a lot of people like that, too. And then later, they'll be like, yeah, man. We're, like, driving around, like, I want to play guitar. Like, we just saw some, like, really sweet music, live yeah. music. I'm like, no, you don't. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, like, I noticed that happens. You like, have to, like, piss them off, though. You gotta yeah, get in their shit. You, gotta, no, you, you don't really want it. You would like to. But if you wanted to, you'd already know how. <laughs> how old are you? How old are you? 25? You don't know how to play yet? You've had 25 fucking years to learn this thing? And you don't know shit? Yeah. Fucking <laughs> I know who you're talking about too. I, li- I love that kid. Leaves out of a pool for the rest of his life. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> I know what you mean, man. Yeah. Well, like I like I had it literally yesterday happen to me. I'm not gonna name a name again, but I was showing somebody this haunted house that I <laughs> the, the, I make a haunted house every Halloween. Fuck yeah. And they they know how cool it is, and I showed them. They saw it when it was complete, and then. Yes, the other day they were over, and they looked at how small the garage was that I built it in. And they're like, wow, that's a fucking illusion. That's so cool. I was like, yeah, well, it takes a couple months to do. You know, I look forward to it every year. It's a lot of fun. I'm planning it right now in my head. It's fucking great. And they're like, oh, man, I would love to do something like that. And I I just looked at them, and I was just like, why don't you? And they didn't say (laughs) anything. Why don't you just do it then? I'm like, you know, no one encouraged me to do this. In fact... Like, everyone in this house was like, no, don't, don't do, do it. it. <laughs> and, like, for, like, the first two fucking weeks, your mom would, come, your mom would come outside and be like, what are you doing? And I was like, <laughs> I'm just looking for something. And, like, the everything's fucking, everything's out of the, out of the garage, garage. <laughs> dude, it's gone. She's it's like, all on she's the lawn. Like, lawn. She's it's like, like, fuck. She knew, right? Like, the first couple days, I was, she's like, what are you looking for? And I was like, oh, just this bike. She came out and started helping me look for it. Oh, I'm my like, my. fuck. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, bike? I just made something up. She's like, you really put it in here? I was like, I thought I did. She's like, well, you'd be able to see it. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to keep looking. I what don't... if we move everything out? Maybe then I can find this Maybe bike. we put up some walls. <laughs> put up a maze and walls. You know, put some Halloween shit up. <laughs> Eventually she was just like, oh, you fucking kid's making a haunted house this whole time. Yeah. But, dude, I think, and there, that, I actually thought of it. <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. Because it's a stupid little haunted house. Well, I was thinking about how every time someone tries to create something cool, mm-hmm. there's always people that are trying to drag them down. Every time? Every, almost every time, man. There's always these big loops, these big climbs. There's always these big falling outs where it's like, oh, it's not going to fucking work. And then they just keep going and they, it finally works. And it always seems like impossible at some point during that. For sure. And there was a point where, like, everything was going completely shitty. Like, my dad was screaming at me. Papa Wright was over. The whole fucking yard looked like shit. Papa Wright? Papa Wright was over. Like, he saw that his canoe was, like, fucked. Like, it was just sitting in the yard and, like, oh. grass got all over it. Because I fucking took it out. Yeah. <laughs> Making it on the house. <laughs> and, like, it just looked so bad. He everyone's took it back. Didn't everyone, yeah, everyone's yelling at me. I'm going to keep building that. <laughs> I kept thinking. I was like, every successful fucking person... <laughs> has obstacles. I'm not giving, giving in. Did you wake up and like have a picture of last year's haunted house on your phone? What do you mean? It's gonna be better than this, dude. I literally woke like, up. I was insane about it, man. <laughs> I woke. I mean, it's a stupid little haunted house. You're dude. a fucking different animal. I'm crazy. You know? <laughs> You're a crazy <laughs> mother. <It's a> fucking <laughs> haunted house. Dude. I woke up at like six in the morning and went and worked on it. <laughs> it's like it's like a month and a half before it happens, dude. Just I'm out there, so dude. All ready to go. Six in the morning, dude. So, boom, 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 boom. Like, thriller <laughs> just bumping, dude. I'm out there just pumped. Yeah. I got school in two hours. I haven't slept in a day. <laughs> dude, Adam and Costello movies are on each wall. It's just fucking August. <laughs> I'm just crazy about it. My dad's like, it's you're going to kill crazy. it. I'm like, I'm not going to fucking kill it. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to kill it for you, not me. Yeah. I love it. And I think you gotta have that, like, that's how you have to feel about what you do. I'm gonna draw it back, bring it down. You have to feel that way about what you do for a living. For sure. You have to be crazy. You have to be crazy. You have to be passionate. I, I already said his name on accident. Joe Rogan yeah. said that, uh, I think he said that something like this along the line. He said, like, um, success and madness or like mastering something in madness or whatever. Success and madness are next door neighbors and they borrow, borrow each other's sugar. So <laughs> like or mastering something in madness or something like that. You know, basically, dude, if you look at a lot of those, like the greats, dude, they're fucking crazy. All like professional athletes, man. They're nuts. They're fucking nuts. You're talking about like Charles Mingus and Jazz. He was, and he's literally in Brian insane Wilson. asylum. Yeah. He Brian, got admitted. Brian Wilson? Yeah. 
live in his bed for five years. It was like two, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Two or three. It was a long a, time. It's man. long enough. You sit in your bed. You eat steak. Yeah, he ate steak. <laughs> God. What a life. What a life, man. And, and like, it's, it's that, uh, <clears throat> there's that def, did I think I said it last podcast, that a genius is somebody who lacks miserably in everything and is super good in one thing. And that kind of shows in, like, especially Brian Wilson, where, like, if you li listen to, like, him talk in an interview, he's just, he has nothing to say. Uh-oh. You ask him about his music, he doesn't know how to describe it. Yeah. He's, like, retarded. We, like, can communicate better through music yeah. than English language. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's, that's amazing to me, man. Mm -hmm. So you're, so you're going to go in the woods and you're going to have a good experience and then you're going up to... Back, back to Marquette, Marquette. and uh, I might try and get a job cooking, learn yeah. some cool shit cooking. I cooked today. Yeah. You cooked today? I cooked today. I cooked steaks. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I cooked steaks for my mom. Upstairs? No, I did. I cooked my own. I had two steaks today. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. On Mother's Day, and you have two steaks. <laughs> <laughs> fucking took advantage of Mother's Day, man. Yeah. Hey, this, day, this podcast is to all the mamas, all the moms out all there, the mamas, all the MILFs out there, too. <laughs> On like Pornhub today, it's just said like I saw that. You see that it was like MILF something. It was like no. a, it was like a MILF ad. It was like Mother's Day MILFs or something. Like that. <laughs> Why, did you go on Pornhub today? No. <laughs> no, I saw something on Reddit that um, like on Mother's Day MILF searches are up 190 <laughs> percent. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's fucked almost up. Almost 200 percent. Almost double the normal day. Cause it's Mother's people are day. looking up MILFs. <laughs> What makes you want to fuck your mom? Not your mom, but a mom, like on Mother's Day. <coughs> Obviously, they're thinking about their mom. Yeah. It sounds like it. Yeah. There's some weird weird cats out there, man. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a weird, that's definitely a weird subject. If you get into things like incest, that's a weird <laughs> one. Seriously. Dude, these deer up in Marquette yeah. on Presque Isle, it's like this little peninsula, and... There's like a tiny, incest. tiny little incest. incest. <laughs> <laughs> there's like this little peninsula, and there's this tiny bridge. And on this tiny bridge, there's a railroad, oh, like a land bridge. On this, um, I'm just watching you do this. Um, this land bridge, there's a, a Ordox there. Yeah. You know the Ordox? Sure. And there's all this activity, there's trains going, and basically these deer are isolated on this island. And they've been living there for, I don't even know how fucking long they've been living there. Right. A long time. And people feed them and, s oh shit. Ow, fuck. <laughs> Holy fuck, man. We got that you on. You need some, <laughs> some safety gloves when you light your incense. God damn, dude, I got caught in my sleeve. Maybe Rex could light it for you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, so these deer have been isolated on this island for so long. People <laughs> feeding them. Yeah. They live in totally different lifestyle than any other deer and very comfortable lifestyle yeah They're very comfortable with people i've gone up to them before i had an apple in my hand and it literally just walked up to me and started eating it mm -hmm. and i touched his head and i was rubbing it and then it, was, and it like took off <laughs> <laughs> dude i thought it was gonna bite me dude it scared the shit out of me but um, <coughs> you look at these deers and they look way different than a normal deer yeah. like their heads they're like really fat and their noses are kind of blunt. Yeah. Dude, dude, they look like donkeys. I'm not even kidding. They look like donkeys. They're, they're so they're funny looking. Like brothers and sisters. <laughs> Seriously. <coughs> yeah. This incestual island of deers. I always wondered about that because... <coughs> oh, God. Right. Um, yeah, I just got a <coughs> dry throat. Um, you want some water? Go on, yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a water, but... Let me finish it. <coughs> you know what I think happened? <clears throat> so that smoke went in there. Swallowed an ember. Um, <clears throat> I always wondered about that with like, because um, like, you know, genetics shows us that, you know, the closer you are related, the more likely you are to have certain birth defects and such. You know, that's why incest is, that's why incest is illegal, essentially. That's, illegal? I think it's illegal. It's illegal to have sex with a rel relative? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's illegal. Dude, it's illegal. I think it's man. fucked up. But I, no, it's illegal, man. It's really? gotta be. I don't know. Dude, prostitution's it, legal in places. Right, but dude, this is this is something else. Incest. This is like this is a very universal taboo. Dude, people fuck their cousins. Yeah. 
You're taking risks. You're taking <laughs> risks whether you're fucking cousins or not. Yeah. No, but I always wondered if you go back to like the royalty period with like kings and queens, George, <clears throat> they would do that because they wanted to keep the power in the family with the blood. And that is something I never, like, do they run into problems as far as, you know, their offspring go? Sure, man. They had to have. They, they didn't Stories figure Stories of King George, one, two, three, I don't know which one, probably third. But he was fucking nuts, man. He'd pace up and down the hallways. I don't remember the exact details, but I just remember he was crazy as shit. Yeah. Because Probably of that. Because of that. Yeah. What did they say about him? They just said he was just, I don't just imbalanced. Yeah. yeah. It was a long time ago. Well, that's that's a weird thing. Like when you talk, start talking about sexual laws. I okay, this is perfect. This okay. First of all, sexual laws. Totally, based on, dude, incest is illegal, man. First of all, <laughs> you know why? Because why? anyone else is fucking illegal. What? In some states in the United States, what? giving a blowjob. What? I swear to God. What if you're underage? No. Period. I prop. It's no. legal. I fucking <laughs> What the fuck? I prop. Well, for gay guys? <clears throat> no. Period. For everyone? Everybody. Like, you're giving... not allowed to put your dick in someone's mouth. Or their butthole, dude. <laughs> or their butthole. I'm telling you. Like, those, in some states, that is illegal. It's religious, man. It's definitely a religious thing. And it's a total cultural thing, too, because age of consent varies across the globe, too definitely think that there's definitely laws that have purposes as far as how old you can be to have sex with people and whatever but yeah there's got to be a law for incest well there there has to, yeah there's a law for incest man i mean there's probably countries that don't have laws incest. for incest there probably is but like if you look at like something like yemen i heard something that yemen age of consent is like nine years old in yemen i don't know if that's still today i heard that somewhere like a couple years ago and that was just what? Nine like nine years, years old. old, you can, you're a legal, you can, you're legal to fuck. Wait, like mean, anyone? I think so. Above. I think that's what age of consent means, oh, right? Oh shit, yeah. So I don't know if in Yemen they still are just like, oh, she's nine, fuck her. <laughs> like I doubt that. Like there's not crazy people in Yemen. They probably get married to other people. <clears throat> probably their parents or some shit. Well, like, um, I mean, in the past when. As soon as a woman had her menstrual cycle start, she was she impregnated. She would be by a lot, a lot older man because. Where is this? This is just like in the past, like you know, some civilization. No, just humans. Period. Humans in the past. Period? Yeah, like probably like hunting and gathering, or like further back, oh. like like uh, like postmodern civilizations, whatever. But um, <clears throat> or pre-modern civilizations. But did they document it? I've know. I've heard this on a documentary actually called um, oh, what the fuck was it called? It's on Netflix. It was actually really good, but it was about that's where Netflix is. Dude, it was about this. I watched it like two years ago. They about made Yemen. Shit? No, no Yemen. I heard it on a podcast, but <laughs> I heard it on the podcast. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was Ari Schaefer uh, was talking about it. But anyways, um, uh, they were just saying they were pointing out how like women would be impressed because. The um, the amount of time human the lifespan of a human was a lot shorter, and you know in order oh, to keep shit. the species alive, you would want to have as many babies before you died of some fucking diarrhea disease or some shit, and yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> anything, you just you die if you get the fucking flu back then. Yeah. And so when as soon as a woman was able to have her eggs fertilized, a lot of times you know a lot older man would marry her or you know just just impregnate her. So they keep the CC alive. Wow. Have you ever seen like the movie Coal Miner's Daughter? No. It's just a it's an old chick flick movie. It's it's actually a good movie, but it's weird because it's based in these old and, and I don't know what what age it was based in. But this guy is married to like a girl that's like thirty years, twenty years younger than him. She's like really young. She's like sixteen, and he's like forty, and it's okay. Really? And my mom watched this movie, and they're like, "Oh, it's a great movie." I'm like, "That guy's fucking a sixteen." <laughs> and they don't even think about it. Oh, it's just a movie. It's I'm like, no, it's historically accurate. <laughs> just fucking learn something from it. Okay. Is it obvious, like in the movie? Well, yeah, yeah. It's it's supposed to be. Okay. It's supposed to be obvious. Yeah. <clears throat> it's like this love relationship between them. Well, no, it was just normal. It was normal then. Oh. Yeah, it was just the time period. So basically, what I was gonna say is that here's what I started thinking, is that 
Sex is such a... a You're yeah. going to move to Yemen? Yeah. I'm getting the fuck out. I'm going to Yemen, dude. No. You want that tight nine-year-old. Oh, dude, come on. Yeah, no, that's yeah, fucked up, man. No way. But, no, this is what I was thinking. If sex was... Cultural? No, listen. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> if sex wasn't something we needed to do in order to keep our species alive... Dude, look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to prove a point here. Sex wasn't something that we needed to keep our species alive. It was just a thing. Just I bet you entertainment that you'd be illegal. I bet you would be illegal. Ooh, I like that. Think about that. So, <clears throat> if you couldn't reproduce by having, but that was sex. not the means of, of having children. It was just fun. Just just fun. felt good. Just felt good. It's just a, a, a just, joyful, just connect with someone. Yeah, you just you just liked it. It was just it, it was pleasurable. Yeah, I bet you it'd be illegal. Like everywhere, just I, just I U.S. Know. Just just not just even in just general. Here. I'm just saying, I bet you it would be illegal in some places. Like it would be a, it wouldn't be a big deal to, for it to be illegal. Uh huh. I mean, there's a lot of it's like, would it be related to drugs? I related Would it be on the same page as that. I related it to like marijuana being. Illegal. Yeah. That's exactly what I went yeah. to right away. I would think it would be illegal too. <clears throat> That's what I thought of. I thought yeah. of that one day in the car I was driving. That's weird, <clears throat> man. It would be illegal if it if it wasn't something that you needed to do. Because. Do you think that could happen in the future? That like, at birth they like harvest their semen, or once we have potent semen they harvest it, mm -hmm. and then they like clip our nuts. Yeah. And then they have it like stored away for whenever we want to have a baby. And they're just like, okay, well, you're gonna marry her. Okay, let's go to her file. Oh, there's some pull eggs. Out some eggs and just. They're like the most um, fertile. I don't want to say fertile, but like the most. You have the they best are the chance most fertile. Of yeah, having that's babies. perfect. Way yeah, thing. yeah. Like when you're young and. Yeah, it's just producing it. Well, that's why there's so many teen pregnancies because even a dude, uh, his his ejaculated, his ejaculation is really. Really, really, I don't know what the word is. Fertile. Fertile. Potent. <laughs> potent. Very potent. Very potent. I don't know. It's just, yeah, thick. I remember my dad telling me, you're not shooting blanks yet. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> so, like, in, like, ninth grade, I'm like, dude, I'm just jerking off on my floor. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm not anywhere near some girl. I'm not, dude, unless some girl comes over, takes her clothes off, and rolls on my floor. While you're jerking off. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. You could probably... On these floors, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, the, the rug Under story, dude. Your bed, maybe. Remember the fucking rug story? Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, God. The rug story? The rug story, dude. Oh, I don't like that story. I like that story. <laughs> we won't. Nasty. It's funny, man. The fact that this rug just picked up like a fucking piece of plywood. Did it? I think so. You were the one that picked it up. You would know. Dude, it picked up like a <laughs> man. It was just stiff. Uh, it was like you dip, you like put it in that, uh, what's that stuff? What? You put it in that stuff and it like freezes it over and then when you break it, it shatters it. I don't know. I saw this video. This is so off topic. <laughs> I saw this video. This fucking asshole professor. He was like talking about laptops. Kids being on their laptops in class. He didn't like it. And it was like a chemistry class, so he mixed this shit together that makes whatever this fucking thing is I'm talking about. It's a very simple thing. Whoever's watching probably knows. Anyways, he like was like, does it like freeze it? It freezes it. It freezes and it. And then when you drop it, it like breaks in a million pieces, like instantly. Like you just go like that, it just shatters. Like not just like that, but, but you just enough to break the ice. Like it doesn't just break it in half. It shatters. Wow. Whatever you dip in it. So if you put your hand in it, man, and went like that on the table, your hand would shatter. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, is it the stuff that uh, like the dermatologist uses? Oh, to like they get rid of a wart. Yeah, or a wart or something. Maybe I don't know. I think it's a lot more. Anyways, this guy makes it. He's all the kids are excited, and he's being cool, and he's like, "All right, can I borrow your laptop real quick?" No way. I swear to God. I no way. I fucking swear to God. How can you get away with that? I don't know. Picked it up and, and dipped it in friend. it. Dipped it in it and just goes and just shatters <laughs> it. And he goes, that's why you don't use laptops in my class. And then starts fucking teaching his class. And I was just like, what? oh my God. 
Maybe, maybe it was playing. Maybe. He could get kicked out, man. Maybe. He could kick out if he was school. tenured. Can't get fired, dude. Who would take it to court? Yeah, I mean, or they would be like, bucks. give me a new laptop. Maybe he had a new one. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's a dick move. It'd be worth the video. Yeah, do it for the, do it for the YouTube video. Yeah. All right. But, oh, all right, man. Does that get in your face? A little bit. Like that. Just like last time. That works better. So, there was this, uh, you've been on Reddit. You're pretty comfortable with Reddit. A little bit, yeah. A little bit? Mm-hmm. Well, you're familiar with, there's like the front page. It's, it's like the basic feed that everyone gets. Yeah. And it's like, you're seeing all these really good pictures and articles and shit. And it's like the whole Reddit experience. And what that's based on is that upvote system. And, you know, picture, I'm going to talk about it later, actually. But every article is something that is going to affect your life. And you're basically voting on shit that you want to share with the world, you know? Yeah. So you're upvoting these, these articles, and it's not like you go through all of Reddit and you can only upvote one article. You pick this one article, and that's the one you're going to share with the world. That's not how it works. Yeah. What you're doing is that you're looking at everything. You can upload these. Like, oh yeah, this is this is like good content, right. so like more people can see it. And I think that's what we should apply to our voting system for democracy. Is that each article is a president running is for a president? Yeah. Is, is a candidate. And, and rather than just voting for Trump or Hillary Clinton, just one person, you have a whole list of candidates. And you can vote for as many as you want. And with this in place, you can vote for every single person on that candidate list, but then your vote doesn't even matter at all. Because you supported every single person. So you might as well just sat home right. and not even vote. What if you vote for every single person except for one? Then you're just not supporting that person. Okay. So if you, let's say... This is how politics works, is like, you use that vote, and it's not necessarily that you want Clinton to win, because you love her ideas, you don't want Trump to win. So you take that vote, and you apply it to whatever you're, it can be most powerful to you, individually. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't apply to this system, because you can vote for, you, can, you have this one vote, and you can apply it to everyone on that list. So then you can vote for Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, mm -hmm. and they both get that vote. And Trump still has no vote. And with this in place, um, anyone can run for president. Because then, like, if you wanted to run for president, I could vote for this whole list. And if you're on the candidate list, I could vote for you as well. And you have the, the equalest vote as Bernie Sanders. Right. So it's like, you show who you're supporting for, and then whoever you don't support is, like, the uncheck. Okay. And with that intact, I feel like, it would just bring more ideas and stuff to the people running for president yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does make sense. I'm just, tr I feel like there's there's a problem, and I don't know what it is. It's, it's not perfect. Yeah. It's definitely not perfect. For sure. Um, but it's better than the system that's in place right now. I and it's that. very easy to, to take in a, in a tangible world. Right. Well, like the system we have right now, it, it, I mean, it, it, there has been good people running, but I mean, for a lot of, I mean, for the last election that we just had, there was a lot of people out there that were just basically like, what the fuck do I have to choose from? And some people just don't vote. Right. Okay, okay, yeah. Some people will just not vote, because mm -hmm. they're like, you know what, this is fucking stupid. Yeah. Like, that's the dumbest thing ever, is not voting. Yeah. Did you vote? Yeah. Okay, right. And, yeah. um... With this in place, you can vote for whoever you want. Yeah. Okay. I see, I see where you're going with that. Uh -huh. So, is there any, in, in your mind, is there any um, boundaries or anything you have to do in order to run? Like, any boundaries? Like, do you have to do anything to run, or just can any Joe Schmo just... Uh, it could probably just be anyone. Yeah. But you'd get a lot of fucking assholes. You'd have to. I think it'd, it'd just be too much to sort through. There'd have to be some sort of some that's sort what of I'm filtering thinking. system. Because you'd have like fucking a thousand people, and among those thousand people, that's just are not qualified for this job. 
Bernie Sanders would be in there. It's like, oh, he's qualified. Yeah. And then again, like another thing that you're looking at when you're voting is like, oh, does this person have enough money to, to run for presidency? Right. So like yeah. when you click on their name or whatever it is, whatever the format is, it will tell kind of some of their credentials, some of their ideas, sure. some They'll of their probably views. have to be um, very short and big picture. Well, the thing is with the presidential election, there's a weeding out process. So you got like the primaries, which is like right before, you know, the Republican and Democratic Party pick their candidate, vote on it, and it just narrows it down to two people. Which is so, stupid. But it why, should you, why should you just have one or the other? But it starts out with, with a number of people, not a lot, and then you vote on it. So eventually, I'm thinking that, yeah, it, it is, yeah, there's definitely going to have to be some, some some things in place. Yeah, some rules. But I just thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. It'd be really easy to implement. Well, I was thinking, you know, I was there's a there's a law that you have to be. I don't know how old. I'm gonna look it up. To how run. how old you have to be to run for president? You have to be a U.S. citizen, don't you? Yeah. Oh yeah. By birth. Yeah, to run for the United States. How old do you have to be to run for president? Thirty-five oh, years. What? Thirty-five years old. Oh, shit. Yeah. See, I was talking to uh, to Schluter about this, and he said that. I think that's stupid. Don't you? I don't even think age should matter. I don't either. I mean, because there's a lot. There's a lot of that. That's so set up for golden age syndrome. Golden age syndrome. Basically, thinking that the past was 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 great. Oh, uh, like I mean, people we, being conservative. We have a we have a president right now that is. He ran his whole campaign on Golden Age Syndrome, which was Make America Great Again. And there's a lot of people that think like that, you know. You know, you look at a lot of those older people, and everything right now from the, the millennial generation is like, oh, well, back in my day, we did this, and we had better music, and, well, we didn't, we worked hard for our money back then. Yeah. Yeah. And they have this Golden Age Syndrome that the past was great. And I think that is totally false, and that's all because when they were young they were open minded they were they were free for, from like corruption and they were expressing themselves they were just young they weren't they didn't learn too much to just have all their opinions already drawn you know what i mean yeah like uh, yeah totally what about when we're in the future you think you would think this life was great yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no reason to think we won't. <coughs> I mean, there's definitely an, ex there's definitely exceptions for people. I mean, you look at someone like Wim Hof. He's like what, sixty years old. He's, he's a, I guarantee you that guy is listening to, to new music and, and listening to new people, young people and stuff like that. But yeah. for a big majority, I mean, there's I've I've witnessed so many people that are in their sixties that listen to music from the fucking 40s and 50s, 60s. And it's like, dude, you're literally living your whole life in a time period of like 20 years when you were open to new things. And then you drew all your conclusions and you shut your mind off and then everything just seemed like shit to you and, and you just wait. It seemed perfect. Mm-hmm. They end up being like more miserable. Without a doubt. Yeah. Is that fucking bugging you? Yeah. Without a doubt, man, definitely more miserable. I mean, I wrote a whole paper about it, and I compared jazz with rap. Do jazz and rap are like the same thing? Yeah. Jazz versus rap, which was like basically saying that, you know, without... I was saying how like so many older generations accept jazz and accept rock and roll with the Beatles and Elvis Presley, which at their time period, they were controversial, and their parents hated them. And they were like, you're listening to the fucking Satan's music. You're, you're just listening to that jazz. Mm -hmm. That's how like, they that called it jungle out. music, man. They were super, music. they were super racist about it because of the African Americans. They called it fucking jungle music, and they tried to repress it. And and it's like now those people who were listening to jazz, not all of them, because I mean jazz musicians are great, but some of the just the people who just listen to it, I bet you they hear like hip hop nowadays and rap. And they're like, oh, I can't even tell what they're saying. And it's like, well, dude, your parents were saying that 
jazz has no foundation to it. They're, oh my God, they're all over the place. It's nonsense. And it's like you're following your parents just in a different way. Yeah. Don't you see that? Like, don't you see that? And and then I and then I said, and even though any, jazz is literally so similar to rap, and that's just a good example. For sure. I mean, well, like dubstep and that sort of music nowadays. See, that's the one that I'm struggling. Dubstep. I'm struggling to like be open to it, but I still never. I try not to say negative things about it. Yeah. I don't necessarily like it either. Yeah, it's weird. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've tried to get into it before. It just, literally just like sucks. I don't want to listen to this uh, anymore. Yeah. But see, at the same time though, you listen to another genre of like independent music, indie music, and stuff like that, and you like some of those artists that come out of that, and that's barely new. I mean, you listen to new music without a doubt, and you listen to old music. I can't think of much new music I actually really enjoy. Well, I mean, I mean, like the Red Hot Chili Peppers are old, but they're they're still making new music. Yeah. So and you like their music, mm -hmm. you know, you listen to, you know, Modest Mouse is still pretty new. I yeah. don't like their new stuff, man. I know. I don't. Well, it's because they peaked. Yeah. See, maybe it's happening to you. Maybe it's happening. <laughs> Seriously. Maybe it is. Maybe it's happening to me. Maybe we're just hypocrites and we're just preaching. I think a lot of it has to do with, like, people really love Modest Mouse's new album and their previous one. That's, what, like, everyone that listens to Modest Mouse that I know is like, oh, that's, like, that's my, my favorite shit. Mm -hmm. That's what Modest Mouse is to them. Is the new stuff? Yeah. That's not what it is to me. Mm -hmm. It's like all their original albums that's from when they first started out and stuff. That's like my favorite stuff. That's always usually when they're their best too. Yeah. Like I mean Bruce Springsteen for me is like his his stuff when it came out in the seventies and eighties and nineties is like gold to me and he's still making music right now and he made a record I think in like two thousand ten. Exception, man. But his no, but his music now I don't really like as much. No. Mm -mm. I still listen to it, man, because I'm like, well, you gained my fucking interest. I owe it to you to listen to it. Whatever <laughs> you fucking make, I will listen to all of it. Yeah. Like, I mean, you got me. I'm not going to shut myself off after the 90s. But yeah. in the 90s, it's weird because, okay, my dad made this, made this connection. was that in the 90s, there was so much great music that came out. Like, it's just, everyone says that, like, you have... You have yeah. rap was just coming out. Nirvana and Pearl Jam. Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Hootie and the Blowfish. Hootie and the Blowfish. Third Eye Blind. Yeah, and Chili Peppers. Set, Chili Peppers, yeah. I mean, so much, you know, Blink-182. I mean, Punk was coming. Every, I mean, just a you lot. You uh, Anarchy from the UK. Yeah, you remember, that? Those, remember those guys? Yeah. Yeah. Just, like, all the bands from the UK. Every like, song off up. of Guitar Hero, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, why, why was the 90s? It's very clear that the 90s were just really good period for the united states tupac and biggie tupac and biggie eminem was coming out eminem, eminem came really big in the early 2000s but, yeah um and then you look at what where we were economically as a nation and we were good and there everything was flowing good here and my ideas and ideas everyone was sharing things everything was going good it was there's got to be a connection hard to explain is there but, an economic factor that makes the arts better there was that happened in the 60s too like jazz that's when hard bop was like in jazz um like they're pretty much bouncing back and forth between like structure and like improv yeah and they go from like swing which has some like good structure to it and improv yeah and then um after world war ii they went to bebop which is super complex and all improv it's charlie parker and dizzy gillespie like blah, 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 just like just all over nuts. the fucking place sure. you can't even, it's hard to follow them yeah that's like the total extreme from a structured music right and then miles davis goes the complete other way mm -hmm. with cool jazz yeah where it's super slow and it's like real smooth. Real, it's really smooth pulling the panties off man yeah pulling the panties off yeah and um then it jumps to hard bop which is like a mix of like the cool jazz and like bebop. And it's like the it has structure to it, but then they're improving. Mm -hmm. That's what people consider like the best category. Not everyone, but that's what I, that's like my favorite. Yeah, it's like 
when I took that jazz class, I was a professor. Not like bebop? Favorite. Not bebop. No. no, it's hard bop. And it's like hard bop, post bop, like that area. Okay. That's where Charles Mingus is. Okay. That's where Art Blakey's at. Okay. Lee Morgan, stuff like that. And that's like, it's like this renaissance in jazz. Right. And that was the 60s, and that's when uh, the America was booming as well like industry and stuff like that and after the war they had a ton of money and stuff like that so it's kind of along, along the same lines as the 90s compared to the 60s mm -hmm. it was uh, Alan Watts was from the 60s 70s For sure. a great philosopher and Beach Boys Beach Boys Beatles mm -hmm. they're all that too and right yeah so it was just this huge push in knowledge right in arts and wealth and stuff for the U.S. But one thing it's like I, a hot spot. One thing I also noticed with a lot, you, you mentioned how they, they changed. Like, they didn't stay in one place, like, as, as a, always as a progressing. Yeah, and I noticed that about a lot of the good artists that separates them from everyone else who can mimic their stuff. Like, you know how you notice, like, it only takes one group to do one thing. So, better example is, like, Travis Pastrana. In, in uh in motocross the backflip was such a big deal and he fucking did it finally no one did it he did it and then now like 10 years later guys are doing backflips triple backflips i think now double backflips it just took that one guy to do it and everyone followed and he just set the he just set the bar a little higher and you look at the beatles that's as far as the beatles music goes everyone thinks i'm crazy for it but i'm not crazy about the beatles but they did serve a huge purpose in music, which they were the first to make that kind of music, and that a lot of people followed them on a line. They still were original. You know they, what I mean? Yeah, they, they sat, everyone sits on the backs of someone else. For sure. And another reason I like the Beatles is because they stole a lot of glory from, like, jazz. Yeah. And, like, they pretty much adopted a lot of their um, chord changes and progressions and stuff. And since they're white, people started listening to them. So they're super popular. Yeah. And selling out concerts and shit like that. And just the African Americans are so suppressed. And right. Stuff like that. So. Well, you say that they're always progressing. And I do see that, that even in their own music as just an individual. Even though, like, you know, we mentioned, like, Modest Mouse, that you don't like their new stuff. And uh, Bruce Springsteen, I don't like their new stuff. Even the Chili Peppers, their new stuff is good. But it's not... Not it's not the peppers. It's not no. as good as they used to be, but they're still making music because they love it, and it's different. And I think that's a lot of the reason why we don't like it as much is because we fell in love with them at their peak. Do you and really think their new stuff's different, though? It's a little different, yeah. The peppers? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Uh, the getaway? I think. I mean, if you listen to the getaway, and then you listen to to Stadium Arcadium, or by the way, it sounds. I mean, Anthony Kiedis's voice is the same. But the way they sing, their, he sings his songs are a little different. The melodies, the music's a little different. They definitely lost a step. It still feels like California. Obviously. Oh, for sure. They're, well, they are California. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, they're, they're still trying, even though... And, like, the, a perfect example is um, Third Eye Blind, too. There's an interview with the lead singer, Stephen Jenkins. And they asked him, like, what is your favorite oldies? What's your favorite old song that you like to listen to that, that you guys wrote? And what's your and he said, I'm not nostalgic at all. I don't listen to old music. I only listen to new music. I only like to play new music. I don't like playing. And before all their shows, yeah. Stephen Jenkins. And he said, before shows, a lot of times I give the audience a chance. I say, you want to hear new songs or old songs? And he says he always wants to play new songs because he's played the old songs a million oh, times. Yeah. And everyone always says the old songs. But, um... It just shows that even though they're not as vibrant as they were, they're still, the reason that they were able to make that music in the first place was because they didn't fall on their heels in the past. Like, they didn't just stick to their own stuff. And then you notice, and then the contrast to that is the one-hit wonders. Yeah. They stopped making music. Like, there's, there's, there's some songs from the 90s that are just number one hits, and that's it. That's all they did, and that's because they just, oh, well, we made that one hit. And then they play it every night, and they just rake in a little bit of money, and they live off of that. That's uh, something I was going to talk about next. Um, like, there's a fine line, like, when you're peaking, 
I think it has a lot to do with like your financial status as a band. Yeah, like so, like you're you're still under the radar, and you're making all this great music and releasing it, and you really want to make it big, and then you start getting noticed. Yeah. And record labels are looking at you. They're still looking for like that extra little bit, mm -hmm. and then it's like right before you're you're starting to sign all these record deals and shit. You're like working your ass off every night, and you're constantly writing and practicing and practicing because you you're just that close and you want to make it big. Yeah. And that's like when you're peaking. And then as soon as you make it big, you got some good material and you're playing it over and over. But then like you don't have that stride. To, to write like really good new music anymore because you're like already there you're right you're in the shit right now look it's at like look at look at the major league look at the hispanics just fucking dominating major league baseball it's because they're literally like they're a lot of their families are over in cuba and they're over here basically cuba fucking hates them and they're yeah. trying to get their families out of there because they came here and they're like they're fucking fighting for like really important shit they're playing that's it depends on it. yeah mm -hmm. send money home and, mm -hmm. and their families survive yeah, i agree 100 percent. yeah that's when sure. and that's why they always make their greatest music then a lot of times mm -hmm. that and their age too yeah their yes. age too well like even like okay so like bruce springsteen and your ability to keep learning mm -hmm. if you, you want to do that yeah that matters a lot too for sure well yeah if you're open to new things well like bruce springsteen you know born to run the album born to run he, that was his best album ever, and I read in his book that he was he was broke. He was not broke, but he was um, he made like little to no money recording that album. Really? He made little to no money recording that album. As far as studio time goes, and all that, like all his money was spent. He probably put in more money than he got back making that. And he was he was like he wasn't he wasn't huge yet. And that's when he made his greatest shit. That's another good yeah. example. See, that's, I see that for me as an opportunity right now. Right. So I have fucking $60 when I make a call. I'm poor as shit. Right. I don't know what it's like to be rich. Right. And I don't want to jump into, like, a job making 60 A little grand. bit of cash. Yeah, and I'm going to have a little bit of cash. I'm going to want a car. Yep. I'm going to have to pay for my car. And if, I don't know. If eventually, I'm just going to be sucked into the materialistic world, and I'm not going to have that strive for to, sure. like, to have my work be passionate and shit like right that. right so I, what i really want to do is get really excited and like go into like a startup where i'm i'm fucking dirt poor and we're working hard every day but we're like trying to make make it big yeah you're like you're like working out of your that. house your little apartment yeah you got all your buddies there on computers like mark zuckerberg like yeah, that's what i thought of zoned social. in he's just yeah. zoned in right now he's he's in you yeah know? he's like fucking with them like He's just next to his head. Just fucking going. Yeah, he's, he's for like line 20 hours straight. <laughs> yeah. Insane. I want to fucking do that, man. That's a fucking adrenaline. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Move out to Cali and just some startup. And I don't know. I think that'd be really cool. Well, here's that's another problem. Um, it, it's rightfully so, too, because in, in a way it kind of balances things out. If you get hungry, if you're poor, dirt poor at the beginning, and you make all this great shit, and then you're and then you're rich, and then you lose that strive to keep making good things mm -hmm. because of your your materialistic. You're not. It doesn't depend on it, but there's like a demand in what you're doing to make money. Your demand is your creativity, and your creativity, everything, your environment, everything pours into that, and that's that's basically all there is to it. But when you look at something like working on Wall Street. Where these guys make money, and it's very, it's very fast paced. They don't. Nothing depends on them making money besides just fucking doing it. You know what I mean? Just being, and that's why they keep making money. You know what I mean? Like as far as like the artist goes, like it de it takes a lot more out of you to make more money. For sure. You know what I mean? You have to be original. You have to be original. You have to be creative, and there's so many factors that come into how creative you are. I think it's, a lot. It's more satisfying. I think, a, think. I think a lot of the artists too are delusional about this. I don't think a lot of them know this. Like, I mean, Bruce Springsteen in an interview, like a guy asked him this exact question, said, "A lot of your music is about, um, is about like being a, a rich man in a poor man's shirt." That's what he called himself in one of the songs. Mm -hmm. 
because he he sings about tough times and other people. It's like country, dude. Yeah. It's like the definition. But of he country. but he does a good job because he doesn't say it's him. He's telling another story. He's doing a narrative of someone else. And dude, it's a terrible example. I'm not bragging on it at all. Dude, I fucking, <laughs> I'm not. That's your boy. But he did say that like it it do, didn't get any harder for him to write that music about that as he he's a millionaire. Really? He said it doesn't. He said that's just his job. And I think he's the best example of anyone to succeed at still doing that. Because he was big and he still did come out with a fucking five or six great albums after he was a millionaire. Yeah. I think that's a lot a, of... You know, are know another good example hmm. of an artist like that? Kendrick Lamar. For sure. He... Um, I never liked him as much as I did until he was super rich and he wrote Pippa a Butterfly. Right. And he wrote about the evils of Lucy and like that's pretty much <clears throat> him with all this money yeah. and Lucy's like the Lucifer the right. devil right. and so all of these evils that came with all this money that he just got Lucy were all around me yeah, <laughs> yeah. that went running for answers yeah for sure and um, yeah and he wrote this outstanding album that almost got best album of the year it did beat it no dude Taylor Swift beat him out you serious? Yeah. Why did I hear that it did? Maybe it's because it was up for it. S someone told me, and then I told you guys that. Uh, and I got bad information. Yeah. I know, cause I looked it. I've been. Well, I looked it up. I, I know. I told, I told my sister that today. I told. Did you really? We were I told to so many people that, and then one day I was just looking up, uh, like the Academies for best albums. Yeah. And I'm like, Kendrick didn't even get best album of the year. Was he second? He was fucking, yeah, it was Taylor Swift. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I was pissed. But. Yeah, definitely Kendrick's a good example. Well, a lot of people think that uh, Good Kid, Mad City is his best album, too. Really? A lot of people. That's that's a pretty historic album. I like I To Pimp a Butterfly more. I've listened to it. Yeah. It's still good. It's still really good. And then this new one that you came out with has some good tracks on it. Well, you came out with one after To Pimp a Butterfly. I don't know if it was just it was a demo. Untitled. Untitled. Or yeah, and it, you didn't have names for his songs. And dude, there's there's some good songs on the both. I haven't listened to them, man. I just haven't been into rap recently. You know? No, I just started getting back into it just a little bit with him with his his new songs. He's the shit right now, though. He is. Like he's rap? the king. Yeah, he's king. He's the best. He's running it. I mean, I'm sure. And at the same time, dude, I'm sure there's some people who really know rap right now. They're going, dude, you don't even know. <laughs> there's this one guy who lives in his fucking mom's basement who yeah. comes out and it's like he's way better. Yeah. There's there's definitely some guys coming up right now that we don't know about that are struggling, like you said, that are coming out with the next great music. Like, I'm waiting for, like, you know, there's always these guys, like we said, the Beatles and the Beach Boys that are great, and the Peppers. Like, they're they're huge. They're in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Like, who is it right now that we don't know that is underneath underneath the stage that no one knows that hasn't reached the limelight yet that it's going to be great? I don't know. Who's coming up? I'm really excited, man. Imagine living, I always imagine living like, if I was born in like 1910, and I got to like live through jazz. Yeah. That'd be fucking amazing. That'd be so cool. Yeah. My, one of my professors, Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. He saw Charles Mingus live in New York. Yeah. Really? He saw him playing. He was probably pretty young. Well, yeah. how, Mingus is gone now, right? Yeah, he died. Yeah. He died from Luke Eric's disease. Oh, like really? 70 something. Yeah. Yeah, but he saw him live. Yeah, like that's amazing. Yeah, it would be. Well, I would love to see. I would love to see a lot of people live when they were huge, like to see the Peppers Shady live Peppers. when they were huge. I've seen them live now; and it's still great. But to see them live when in the fucking two thousands and the nineties, or to see Bruce Springsteen live in the eighties, fuck man, he sold out giant stadium, the football stadium, sold it out. It was just fucking. Just everything was perfect. What's that really famous uh, live concert by the Chili Peppers? It's like in Ireland or something? Yeah. Is uh, it on the By the Way know. tour? Yeah. But I think they're over in like the Netherlands or something. I don't know. Yeah, they're he, overseas. Yeah, he's it's fucking insane. It's in it's some there. palace. Yeah. Or some castle. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Sandcastle. Something like that. Sandcastle? I'm or, sure. Dude, I, it sounds sand. Yeah, dude, hold on. <laughs> we got a computer right here, man. It's funny, though. But actually, it'll come up. It's like 
Just do live. It's like the first one, probably. Pipers. Live. Sling, Sling Castle. Castle. Let's just take a look at this. Dude. Yeah, so like, nuts. Like right just here. Just get it. Get it zoomed out and just to see. This is the whole the mass of people there. Look at that. Dude, they could bum rush the stage and fucking kill them if they wanted to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easily. Yeah. They're gonna come out. It's free. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Look, Look at, at that. that. What the fuck? That's nuts, man. That's insane. They're just up there just playing music. Yeah. That's all they're doing is playing instruments. <laughs> Four guys making Four guys. some sounds, some vibrations. All these people there to list, just tap in to that energy. Kishante, man. He's just... It's, it's not even, on. like, the same song you listen to Shante play. No. And the way that he just like makes transitions to other songs yeah. is so fresh. Right. It's amazing. You just know he's feeling it. He's got his mouth open. <laughs> there yeah, I like, love it, dude. <laughs> playing. Look at the, the energy that they bring. No. Well, dude, they, they even said that in their, um, that they were talking about playing live music and they were saying, Anthony Kiedis said that he got some advice from this guy. He said to play every show like you're playing for the guy in the very back. If he's going like this, if he's fucking feeling it all the way back there, then you're doing your job. <laughs> he said, it's easy to get the people right in the front, but if you're getting that amount of people to all be participating in that moment, that's because fucking. you're um, you're doing your job. You you deserve the praise that you're getting. Who was saying that? Anthony Kiedis. Uh, Dude, if you're talking about John Frusciante, man, that guy is something else. He's brilliant. There was like a there was like a video of like them going into his house, and like it was just fucking trashed. <laughs> like, dude, he would like paint it on his walls. Like, he was like, yeah, you know, I just dabble in some painting sometimes. <laughs> it's like paint on his, his wall. wall. He like had his car in his garage, and he went in his garage and it was just trashed. And then he painted on his car. What the fuck? He's just fuck? bored. <laughs> And then he like was probably just tripping out and like heroin, like he had some drug problems big time. Dude, I remember he was talking about a documentary when he was like talking about him playing and he like gets some sweet lick and he's just feeling it. He's like, I know it's really good when my dick starts getting hard. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm just erect and I'm feeling it. Yeah, when <laughs> like, I get it. And, and he's like, sometimes I have to fight the urge to not go jerk off while I'm playing. <laughs> He goes, should I jerk off or should I just keep feeling this? Just keep playing. <laughs> should I just let it be and just let it inspire me? That's what he said. <laughs> Those guys are fucking nuts, man. Yeah. Well, he's one of the greatest, man. He's he's one of the greatest guitar players, I think. You For can sure. you can definitely tell. See, that's a big that's the big thing a big thing about their band losing their their sound is him leaving the band after Stadium Arcadium. Yeah. But yeah, that's man, huge. that's. That's insane. That that amount of that amount of people. I know. I would love to see see that many people at a concert. Like, I wouldn't want to be at that honestly, unless I was at the front. At the front. I don't know, man, dude. Too it's many people. Scary. Yeah. It's scary. Well, he trapped at, him there. at that concert. He said, "We came across the pond." Like he came across the fucking the ocean. Oh, the ocean. We came across the pond to be with you. <laughs> They're like. Just jamming, it's just like so cool, man. What a lifestyle that is, though. Yeah. And actually, Anthony Kiedis, you know, you think he, they were wild when they were young, but he said that, you know, after he became big, the groupie thing, he said there was just something bad about he didn't really like about women wanting to have sex with you because of something you do. He said, you know, I didn't really get into the groupies after I was big. He said, I didn't really like, uh, you know, we always had closed Kitas. hotels. He just said that. I mean, he's probably making, he makes it. <laughs> but now he brings his kid on tour with him and shit. Like, they're, they're a lot older. Yeah, they take care of themselves now. But we're going to see him. So that's going to be yeah, yeah. God damn. This was so good. But, oh. All right. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much everything I got. Yeah, I'm good, man. I, yeah. We can wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Well, that was it, man. That podcast was podcast number two. Podcast number two in the books. That's probably the last one I'm going to have with you for a little while. Yeah. I'm going to bring my so dad yeah, all here. week. We got all week. Maybe we'll, we'll do another one. Yeah. We think of some content. Uh -huh. So, 
All right, bitches. Thank you guys for listening to the Millennials. The Millennials. This was Joe Benino. Not Joe Rogan. Joe Benino. <laughs> Computer scientist. That's right. We'll see you guys next time. Ha, 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 ha.